There are people inside you who never had names, people who lived and died tens of thousands of years ago, long before civilization, long before memory, you'll never find their bones because they vanished without leaving a trace, and yet they live inside us all. Scientists call them ghost populations, groups that once existed but disappeared so completely that only their DNA remains. The story of Europe begins not with kingdoms or empires, but with migrations. Over the last 50,000 years, wave after wave of humans entered the continent, but ancient DNA has revealed something strange. When researchers looked deeper into the genes of early Europeans, they found ancestry that didn't match any known fossils or archaeological cultures. It was like finding fingerprints on a door, but no body behind it. The people were gone, their genes were not. The first clues appeared in 2014, when scientists decoded the genome of a 7,000-year-old farmer from Spain. His DNA didn't fully match the expected ancestry of early European farmers. Hidden within it were signals from an unknown group, one that must have existed before agriculture reached Europe. Similar signals appeared in DNA from hunter-gatherers in Luxembourg, Sweden, and Italy. Again and again, scientists found traces of lineages that didn't belong to known populations like the Gravettians or Magdalenian cultures. The conclusion was unavoidable. Europe's genetic story had missing chapters. These missing groups are what scientists now call ghost populations. They're not ghosts in the supernatural sense, but genetic ghosts, ancestral populations that disappeared physically but left their DNA mixed into others. To understand them, we have to go back to the last ice age. Around 30,000 years ago, Europe was home to just a few scattered human cultures, small bands of hunter-gatherers living on the edges of these vast ice sheets. Then, about 20,000 years ago, the world changed. The ice began to retreat. People who had been trapped in southern refuges, places like Iberia, Italy and the Balkans, started to spread north again. Each region had its own surviving groups, isolated for thousands of years. When they moved and met again, they mixed, genetically, culturally, and linguistically. But, you know, many of those isolated lineages didn't survive the next waves of migration. Their genes, though, were absorbed into new peoples. Their cultures disappeared. Their names were never written. But their DNA never left. One of the earliest ghost populations discovered is known informally as the Vestanitz Cluster, named after remains found in the Czech Republic. They lived around 30,000 years ago, Ice Age hunters who made Venus figurines and hunted mammoth. Their genetic legacy faded after the glaciers advanced, replaced by newer groups who moved in later. Still, fragments of their DNA show up in later Europeans. Another ghost lineage is the Villa Bruna Cluster, a group that spread after the Ice Age ended, about 14,000 years ago. They represent one of the last great hunter-gatherer populations before farming arrived, but even they weren't alone. Inside their DNA are traces of even older ghost groups, people who no longer existed, but still lived through them. Then came the biggest shift in European prehistory, the Neolithic Revolution. Around 9,000 years ago, farmers from Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, began moving into Europe, bringing agriculture and domesticated animals. For a while, scientists thought these new arrivals simply replaced the hunter-gatherers. But the truth was more complex. When researchers sequenced the genomes of early Neolithic farmers, they found signatures of ghost ancestry again, lineages that didn't belong to the farmers or the local hunter-gatherers. Somewhere there had been another population, mixing with both, but leaving no direct archaeological record. By the time the Bronze Age began, Europe's genetic landscape had shifted again. A new wave of people arrived from the east, the Yamnaya, herders from the Pontic Caspian steppe. They carried Indo-European languages and haplogroups like R1b and R1a. Yet even within their genomes, scientists found traces of older DNA that didn't belong to known steppe or European populations. These were ghost signatures again, older groups from the Caucasus, or perhaps even beyond, whose physical remains are still missing. To this day, geneticists continue to discover new ghost populations hidden within European ancestry. Some may represent ancient hybrids of modern humans and Neanderthals. Others might be groups of Homo sapiens who arrived early and were later absorbed. Every genome we sequence adds another layer, and honestly, another mystery.
One example comes from northern Spain and France. There, researchers found people who carried DNA that didn't match known hunter-gatherers or farmers, it seemed to be a mixture of something older, perhaps a remnant of the first modern humans to reach Europe, more than 45,000 years ago. Their bones are gone but their genes whisper through time. So, how many ghost populations are hidden in our DNA? No one knows. Some scientists estimate there could be dozens of distinct lineages that disappeared without a trace, absorbed into others over tens of millennia. Each one represents entire generations of people, families, tribes, languages, erased from history but written in our genes. Modern Europeans, it turns out, are genetic mosaics. Their DNA carries pieces of Ice Age hunters, early farmers, steppe herders, and many others whose names we'll never know. In some ways, that makes every person alive today a kind of living archive, a biological record of all those who came before. When you look in the mirror, you're not seeing one ancestor, you're seeing thousands. Ghost populations aren't unique to Europe. Similar findings exist in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. In Africa, for example, entire unknown groups contributed DNA to modern people tens of thousands of years ago. In Asia, Denisovans, another archaic species, left genetic traces from Siberia to Papua New Guinea. The pattern is universal. The story of humanity is not linear, but layered. It's humbling to realize that most of our ancestors are forgotten. For every person whose DNA line survived, countless others ended. But ghost populations remind us that extinction and continuity often exist side by side. Even when people vanish, their essence remains. Encoded in the double helix. Traveling silently through time. When scientists sequence an ancient genome, they aren't just uncovering data. They're resurrecting pieces of lives that ended tens of millennia ago. People who laughed, hunted, built fires, told stories, and watched the same stars we see today. They're gone, but their DNA is still talking. So the next time you hear about ancient DNA or population genetics, remember this. You are a collection of ghosts. Every cell in your body carries their signatures. From the Ice Age hunters of Europe to the first humans who walked out of Africa, you are their echo their survival, their unfinished story, and those echoes are louder than you think. Every heartbeat, every breath, every instinct to protect, explore, and create, all of it comes from them. They faced extinction more times than history can count, yet something in them refused to stop. That same something is what drives you now, even if you don't notice it. When you stand beneath the night sky and feel small, remember that your ancestors saw the same constellations and wondered the same things. They feared death, searched for meaning, and reached for warmth in one another. The difference is, you carry their answers inside you. Their DNA isn't just a record of what they were. It's a memory of how they endured. It holds the blueprints for courage, adaptation, and the quiet miracle of persistence. You are built from generations of triumphs and mistakes, migrations and rebirths, love and loss, all layered inside you like sediment in stone. That's why studying ancient genomes isn't only about science, it's about gratitude. It's a way of saying, we remember you, you mattered, your struggles built the world we now walk on. So, the next time you feel alone, think of that endless chain of people whose lives made yours possible. You are not the end of their story. You are the continuation they hoped for, proof that even after tens of thousands of years, their voices still rise through you.